Previously on Let's Play Tales of Symphonia. It's finally time. Corinne! Corinne! Why? For the sake of everyone that risked their lives to protect me, Vault, I demand your power! Presently on Let's Play Tales of Symphonia. This is a dangerous situation. Oh shit, you guys. It's Vault. So Vault just freaking off and killed Corinne, just right in front of Sheena's face. So, uh, guess what? We're gonna go ahead and kill Vault in front of Vault's face, see how he likes it, you know? Also, Vault is annoying. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. You know how- well, you know what's not annoying, however? Freaking... Fighting of the Spirit, which is playing in the background right now, which is great. So actually... I've done a terrible mistake. I have made an absolutely horrible mistake. I need to replace Lloyd's weapon with something. Okay, great. I can actually do that during battle. Amazing. Because uh, if you use the lightning blades, that will just go ahead and heal him. And that is the last thing we want, to be honest. Let's do this. This guy has 24,000 HP. And a bunch of guts for just doing something as evil as that right in front of our faces. Gosh dang. I'll show you, you... Dingleberry. Yeah, I'm using the rough language here. Nurse, that's just what we needed. Alright, Yunzen attack! Oh, I wasn't allowed to activate Sheena's attack, apparently. Alright, so Vault, as I said, can be a really annoying customer. With his constant spamming of electricity attacks, there's really no telling what's, what's gonna happen during this battle. He's gotta be... Gotta be on, uh... You gotta be on guard, you know? Just gotta watch out for his spammings. Gotta be ready to heal. Like, I think Rain is pretty much a necessity for this battle. As she is with most battles, to be honest. So, uh, okay, let's see here. It's really dangerous to approach, too, because of that bullshit... Bullshit spammy-ass thunder crap. And I just up and died. That's great. Amazing. Uh, Prisea is occupied... Sheena, go ahead and use... Go ahead and heal me. Liz, thank you. Oh, I didn't realize Sheena was right behind there, alright. I love how a nurse, just a bunch of nurses go running around the battlefield, that's great. Okay, I think I'm gonna switch out to Beast so I can knock this thing over. Oh, I actually do have Beast, but I'm some kind of dingus, I fear. Huh, okay, let's switch out for Hunting Beast, that's sure to do some real damage. Also drain my TP like crazy. Oh well, alright. I need to... Oh, there we go, Hunting Beast. If you can knock this thing on the ground, that's great. But he doesn't... He seems to be very resistant to that. Oh shit! The game went into slow motion mode. Crap, okay, this guy. I hate this guy, you know? He's just being a complete douche, douche nozzle. There's no, there's no denying it. I really don't like this guy. Uh, gee, okay, what do I do? Am I out of- no, I have orange gels, but it's quite- there's quite few of them right now. Uh, restores- I could go ahead and use the- ah, I'm gonna- yeah, why not? I think I need to at this point. Regular attacks just don't cut it, you know? Gosh darn it, Vault. Okay, he's down to 8,000 HP, so we're doing some damage, which is good. Rain is just keeping up with her healing, which is also good. I'm a little worried about that. Uh, okay. Somehow, uh, Prisea and Sheen actually seem to be very, doing very good on their own during this battle. They haven't really needed my support all that much, it would appear. They're actually keeping their health really high, too. Uh, maybe not anymore. <laughs> okay, Sheena! Okay, check this shit. Sheena's gonna summon a spirit! Go on! Sadly, that... Oh, well, there we go. This is the first time we've actually seen... Sh uh, seen Shumashinger? Yeah. This is the first time we've actually seen... See, see, that's really difficult to say. This is the first time we've actually seen Sheena summon a spirit. I mean, she only has one spirit thus far, but we're gonna make another one, let me tell you what. 
And you can only summon spirits at a while in over limit mode, which is why we rarely see it. Because, you know, I've, I haven't really kept her in the party either since we made the pact with Kar oh, I was about to say the pact with Corinne, but the pact with Undine. So, there's that. Okay, let's finish this. Damn. Do not think ill of us. We did it. And Rain discovered a compound X skill. Awesome. We're getting a lot of those. Da da da. Volt says, make your vow. Just like I said. For the sake of everyone that risked their lives to protect me. And for Corinne's sake as well. I want to save both worlds. Da, da, da. The vow has been made. I entrust my power to the Pact Maker, Sheena. All right, we did it. Finally over. What's happening? What? Oh. Oh, hey. It's Undine. A link between the two worlds has been severed. What? A link between worlds? That's a Zelda game. Da, da, da. Wait. I'll translate. The two opposing forces of mana were... severed just now? What? What does it mean for the mana flow to be severed? What you talking about, Dean? Mana flows from the world in which the summon spirits sleep to the world in which the summon spirits are awake. This is the first time the summon spirits have been awakened in both worlds at the same time. Because of this, the mana connecting the two worlds has been eliminated. Is that so? Does that mean that Silveron and Tetheala have stopped competing for each other's mana? Da, da, da. I do not know. The only thing certain is that the flow of mana between the worlds has been severed. Okay, can we be honest here? How awesome is it that Rain speaks electricity? Yes. Eventually the world shall separate. You mean the two worlds will split apart? Whoa. That's perfect. That's just what we needed. Then they'll stop competing for each other's mana. Mamma mia! There are five seals in Silveront, and since there wasn't a summon spirit at the fifth seal, we should be able to sever all of the mana if we awaken the summon spirits that correspond to the other four seals. Huh. Maybe. So, if we awaken Tetheala's summon spirits, we'll save Silveront without having Tetheala go into decline, right? At the least, the mana connecting the worlds will disappear, and the two worlds will separate. That's great. I see. So the seals serve as a link between the two worlds. I know the name for this episode. We owe it all to you, Sheena. And Corinne as well. God rest her soul. Huh? Because the two of you risked your lives to form the pact with Volt, we now know what the seals do. God rest her soul. That's right. It's thanks to both of you. Corinne. Thank you. Acquired Corinne's Bell. And acquired sar s Sardine. Sheena learned T-Seal, Lightning. We can now summon Volt during battle. And she also obtained the title of Summoner, which means you want to stay away from her. Most likely. Because, you know, you know how it is. You know, stay away from the Summoner and whatnot. Alright, so uh, let's have a look at some of that stuff, shall we? Sardonyx. Corinne Isabel. A memento of Corinne, who risked his... Corinne was a guy? Okay, sure, whatever, I don't know. It's really hard to tell with those animals, you know? <laughs> it actually reminds me of a fun story for our cat. Uh, we went ahead and... Oh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and check what the Sardonyx does first. 
Um, we'll help you find your soulmate. Okay. Well, that's good, I guess, but don't see what use it has in battle. I don't know. Okay, guys, we completed our first Summon Spirit Temple. Like, like if you didn't guess already, there's going to be more of those, like, in the near future. And I'm looking forward to it, because these are some of my favorite parts of the game. Also, here's Orochi. I guess you succeeded in forming the Pact with Vorte. Congratulations, Asina. Orochi, thank you. No, the whereabouts of the Riaritz. Take a look at his map. The signal from Shina's Guardian was detected on the Adasi, Sota. I don't know what his accent is turning into anymore. A fjord like area covered in ice is located there. That must be the entrance to the Renegade base. If it's underwater, does that mean we'll have to dive into the sea? Don't worry about it, I'll go ahead and make preparations. You guys join me later on. Okay, let's get going. Yes, to rescue Colette as well. That's what we need the Riards for, after all. Yes, we need to rescue her from her pregnancy. The most dangerous curse of them all. Gosh dang it, I'm a horrible person. Alright. Let's, um... I, uh, I, I, I don't know. I feel like we're done here for some reason. But, uh, there was something. Oh yeah, the story about our cat. Alright, so, we watch a skit, I guess. Maybe we should actually pay attention to this skit. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess. Thanks. We owe it all to you. And Corinne. You did good. I, I have to apologize to Corinne. Why? Yeah, why? Do tell. Because I told him that he wasn't strong enough to help. But it seems what wasn't strong enough was my courage. It was terrible of me to say what I said to him. Yeah, that happens. Pray to Corinne's bell. To his bell? To his Taco Bell. This episode is sponsored by Taco Bell. If you need to redeem some things you said about or you're one of your passed away friends, then come to Taco Bell. We offer free prayers at our altar. You're also going to have to buy tacos. If, you, if you're going to use the altar, that's... Haha, <laughs> good idea, I'll try it. I'll try to get... I'm just going to stop reading, look like forever. Like the rest of this Let's Play, I'm not even going to read any dialogue. I'm just going to be making noises. Like, noises of what I assume is being said. Because, as I said, I cannot read. So, I was actually hoping for another skit. Just so I could talk about the story I was going to tell about our cat. Like, I was talking about uh, how uh, it's different. It diff can be difficult to tell the gender of animals, like, especially in a case like this, but, uh, okay, I guess we need to go back to Mizuho. I'll tell the. I guess I'll tell the story on the trip there or something. It's probably gonna be the last thing I do in this episode, so if you really don't feel like hearing about the, my gosh darn cat story, then hey, go ahead. You're probably not gonna miss much. Um. Okay, so fun story about our cat. Uh, when we adopted the cat. For, like from one of, from one of our family friends. Um, I don't know why, but like they told us that the cat was male, and so we gave the cat a male name, which is like it's a Norwegian name, so it won't make any sense to like to you guys. But uh, <laughs> um, so f f fun fact: we go to neuter the cat like six months later. Yeah, pro yeah, well, it's not like six months later, and uh. We're just like, hey, you, hey, Mr. Veter- v v I was about to say veteran. <laughs> wow. The veterinary. Hey, Mr. Veterinary. Could you please castrate our cat, or neuter the cat? I, I guess it's the case, yeah. Um, and it's like, well, you know, this is a very elegant cat. Like, a very elegant male cat, I must say. And we're like, what are you, what are you saying here? Well, I'm saying that your male cat is actually a female cat. And so... My life changed forever from that day on forward. And I knew, like deep within my heart, that the cat was actually female. And so ends the story of the man from Nantucket who stuck his head in a bucket. Thanks for watching.
<laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Let's Play Tales of Symphonia, or these episodes, rather. In the next episode, we will be contemplating whether Rain is actually the devil or not. Will we find an answer? Probably. Maybe. We'll see. Speaking of see, I'll see you then. Goodbye.